and welcome to Not Just Books, the library's monthly show about what is happening in your world and at the Williamson County Public Library. My name is Dolores Greenwald and I'm the director. Thank you for joining us. Today we will cover topics ranging from business, computer tablets to poetry. Also, we have with us some special guests and you'll not want to miss a second of our jam-packed show. In our Your World segment, we will feature the Better Business Bureau and its online auction with, and we'll be speaking with Elizabeth Medford. Elizabeth is the Regional Vice President of the BBB and is Executive Director of the Integrity Foundation. She'll be talking about the exciting things that are up for bid. And I want to especially hear about the autographed Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel. In our Save the Date portion of the program, we will feature poets living in Williamson County and discuss what is happening in the writing community. We will be talking with two superstar poets, Vera Jung R and Sally Lee. In our What's Hot in Books segment, we'll be talking with Katie Searcy. She's children's librarian at the main library, and we will be talking about our new tablets, which are available for children to check out. We just started checking them out, and they are very popular. We can't keep them on the shelf. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our program. You'll be glad that you did. Did you know our annual report is now available on the library's website, wcpotn.org? Find out about our crazy busy year and all the fun we had putting the programs together. Also, read about how busy our friends group and foundation were in helping us present the wonderful events. Go to wcpotn.org and it's definitely worth reading and great pictures too. Welcome back. In our Your World segment, we are very pleased to have Elizabeth Medford with us today to talk about some exciting things that are happening with the Better Business Bureau and here in Williamson County. Elizabeth is the Regional Vice President of the Better Business Bureau and she's also Executive Director of the Integrity Foundation. Yes, that does sound like two full-time jobs because it is. But help us welcome today Miss Elizabeth Medford. Hi. Hey, thank you, Dolores. Nice for you. Nice to see you today. I know. I, after a long weekend. <laughs> I know. After a long weekend. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Integrity Foundation and uh, the online auction. Why did the BBB of Middle Tennessee and the Integrity Foundation decide to do this online auction? We were looking for something that would be a win-win-win for the business, for the general public, mm -hmm. as well as for the foundation and for our trainings. And so we looked around and kind of gravitated towards maybe doing an auction. And then we realized that we needed it to be kind of larger than a silent auction. So we turn towards the online auction, and we do that from November 1st. This year it goes till November 22nd. Oh, that's a good time of year to mm -hmm. do it. Be thinking about Christmas shopping that's and exactly right. all, that, all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about the website and how easy is it to register for the auction. The website is super easy. Um, you go to gobbb.org mm -hmm. forward slash auction real easy to remember and you can get it to it from the BBB website the gobbb.org there's okay. a link there you can click for the auction Excellent. but it's really easy to register you go to the website and it'll say login and right below the login is a little registration button ah. you click on that you register it's completely free to register it does not cost you a penny wow and you can register and you can preview all the items and we're adding new items every every week so we may add 10 new items this week it's it's worthwhile to go ahead and register and just kind of look around and see what items we have so that you kind of get a feel for it and yeah. I have some items that are still up there from last year ah. so you can kind of see you know uh -huh. what things were going for and it gives you a good idea of the volume and the variety of items we have okay um. Well, you brought something with you today. I did. As an idea. I did. I brought a show and tell, a couple show and tell items. Well, darn it, you didn't bring the whiskey barrel. No, I didn't bring the Jack Daniels whiskey <laughs> barrel. 
I apologize for that. That was a little heavy to get in my car. I bet it would be. <laughs> but I did bring this lovely basket from my second home, a pet resort and spa. They do a grooming to boarding, all kinds of, they have supplies for pets as well. Like in this basket, you have some milk bones and they kind of made a variety basket. So mm -hmm. you have some things for cats and you have some things for dogs in here, treats and toys wise. And then there's also this lovely 50% off coupon for a boarding stay of your choice for the first, uh, first time customer. So that's a really nice item and just kind of give you an idea of some of the items that are on there. That's great for pet lovers like it me. It is. Yeah. It is great for pet lovers. <laughs> and then I also brought this um, ministry Bible, which is from Lifeway Resources. They are so generous and have That's donated nice. every year to our online auction. Oh, great. So this is a beautiful bi Bible in leather and just appreciate them doing that for us. Now, that does raise a, a question. How long have you been doing this auction? We've been doing it. This will be our third year. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So um, what if someone sees something on the website and they would like to request it? If you see something on the website and you, you think, oh, I'd love that, but I'd like it from a different location or I'd like it from a different business, all you have to do is contact us and say, hey, or if there's an item that we don't have mm -hmm. that you would really like to bid on. That's like a wish list for Christmas oh, item. Excellent. You can reach out to us and say, hey, can you see if anyone will donate this? Oh, okay. And we'll go after it and idea. see if we can get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, if bidders have a problem, what kind of guarantee do they have? Well, of course, the auction is backed by the Better Business Bureau of Middle Tennessee. So if you have a problem with any item or you have a problem with a service that is on the online auction, just come to us. We'll always make it right. <laughs> That's kind of the back of what we do. So you have, there's guarantee you will not be disappointed. We will take care of you. Now, you said you've been doing this for three years. How do you find the items for the auction? That's a great question. We go out to all the businesses in Middle Tennessee and Southern Kentucky and we just ask. We ask what's something you can easily donate to the BBB online auction that will help us raise money for our trainings that we do for free for the community. And they are very generous. We have some great business owners and they give very generously. That's how we find our autumn items is from local businesses. So if you're a business owner, you wanna get involved with this auction. Uh, what are some of the biggest items that you've had? Well, this year from Freeland Chevrolet, they have donated a black Chevy Cruze. Wow. So we have an actual vehicle that has been donated that cool. we're auctioning off on the online auction. It's a beautiful vehicle. You can come out to the home show in Nashville, the Nashville Home Remodeling Show. Uh, I think it's September 17th, 18th, and 19th that weekend. And you can take a look at the vehicle. You can kick the tires, climb in. Um, you can also find the vehicle at Freeland Chevrolet and take a test drive. It's really low mileage, so it's a really, really nice item that they That's donated awesome. this year, and we're really excited about That's it. That's awesome. Well, how, um, how can people find out more information? What's the website again? It is gobbb.org forward slash auction. And there's some smaller items. They're reasonably priced the last time I looked at that website. So you can, you can plan on giving a lot or just a little. It, it's all varied and it's all very well organized and put together. Yeah. We have everything from restaurant gift cards that are reasonably priced, like $25 mm -hmm. Amerigos, to um, hotel stays from Renaissance Nashville. Uh, Beeman Dodge Jeep is giving some Titans tickets. Cool. So we have um, Madison Family Dentistry is giving away a Ultimate Teeth Lightning. So there's some services on there. Very cool. USS is giving a fifteen hundred dollar uh, or fifteen hundred dollar foundation repair waterproofing, and then also DT McCall's is giving away a Lazy Boy recliner. Oh, so awesome. there's furniture. There's all food different items, kind of things. All kinds of items. Well, thank you so much for telling, joining us today and telling us about the BBB and the online auction. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Dolores. And we'll be right back.
Not too long ago, I made a big mistake. I let our teenage daughter have a drinking party at the house. I thought it was the right thing to do. I thought it would be safer if they drank here. And I'm embarrassed to say I thought we might be the cool parents. I didn't know it was illegal to allow teenagers to drink alcohol in our home. That we could be prosecuted, fined, even jailed. And we were. And that wasn't cool. Welcome back. In our Save the Date segment today, we have two very special poets with us to discuss poetry and the writing community here in Williamson County. And we have Sally Lee and Vera here. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting us. I'm not sure. Um, I'll start with Sally Lee first. How does someone become a poet? Because it's such a different genre than nonfiction writing even. Well, or it's really writing. different from nonfiction <laughs> because in nonfiction you make a plan. That's right. And then you go out and do the research. That's right. That's <clears throat> and then right. you write it. That's right. That's and then right. you get somebody to critique it. Yeah. That's right. Well, poem poem's very different. Uh, but for me, um, I think a lot of people write a little fiction, a little poetry, a little nonfiction. They some personal essays. Uh, a lot of people do a little bit of this and that and don't really know where they want to go. They just, it's coming and you've got a full-time job and you've got children and you just sort of toss these in. Mm -hmm. But later, when you get old, there's some time. So after I, you know, finished, didn't one work in, children were grown, all that. Um, I was writing, I wrote two or three, several nonfiction books of some niche publishing, mm -hmm. my neighborhood that Rick Warwick published it mm -hmm. for me. And um, then I sort of looked at the thing and we had the critique group at the library and it was just such a pleasure to go up there and read whatever you had. Um, and I decided, for me, I decided that poetry was the most serious thing, the thing I most wanted to do. So I started concentrating on it. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't that I, well, recently I read that, um, let's see, when W.S. Merwin was a young man, <laughs> and he was going to Europe and he wanted to be a poet, and Ezra Pound told him, you have to write 75 lines a day. Well, luckily I didn't get that advice <laughs> <laughs> back then, because I just went ahead and wrote, and uh, I had written some before, of course, and then you just do a little bit more and a little bit more. If you say you want to do it, you do it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, finally, I did find a, a really, really good online poetry uh, course, quite rigorous, and worked you hard for eight weeks. And um, I enjoyed that, but it would have been the same without it. Mm -hmm. I'd have kept on writing, mm -hmm. whether, whether you do that or not. Mm -hmm. That was a pleasure, mm -hmm. and it did work me hard, and it was good. But actually, I look back at the work I did before that, and it's, it's all about the same, up and down, some mm -hmm. better, some less. And I just saved them all. Sort of conceited, but I just saved them all. Mm -hmm. And so now at this point, I'm 83 years old, and I have a really long list of poems on my computer. <laughs> so and although they're categorized and put in different files and things, if I want to find one, I just have to put, put the search thing mm -hmm. in, you know, at the top mm -hmm. and find that point. Because <laughs> so I enjoy uh, having them. Uh, I use some as my personal memoir. Mm -hmm. Instead of writing a memoir for mm -hmm. my family, when I write a poem about the family, I just slot it in to the dates. It would, like, between 1935 and 1945, oh, that's a great idea. just slot it in there. There's one about being the first time you ever bat a baseball, you know. <laughs> and, and that was about, yeah, that was about 1937. <laughs> so you just put it in and you just mm -hmm. sort of arrange them, not, not too carefully. And of course, your memoir is going to have lots of gaps in it, but it's also going to show your family. Some re insights that you wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. um, and otherwise, I just save them and use them in various ways. I have not put out a book yet, but it's getting more and more tempting. I was going to say, it sounds like it would be a very nice collection. Well, to I did have, when, when I was in chemo two years ago, uh -huh. I wrote some poems about the experience, not planning anything. I just, lots of times, I just have the experience, mm -hmm. and so I write about mm -hmm. it. And I 
I write in different forms. I write sometimes rhymes, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what the poem does. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had about five, six, seven poems about being in chemo, and then I had about five or six, seven about being in remission. Mm -hmm. So a friend who had written me, a friend who had also been there, and she would written me a letter in which she said, welcome to the chemo club. Oh. And that was so touching, you know. So that's the name of the book. Okay. And I put it out. It's uncopyrighted. Anyone may copy any of the poems, put them anywhere they want to. I ran it off at FedEx a hundred at a time, <laughs> and I gave them away like popcorn. Oh, that's great. And I gave, them to, I gave them to my doctors. I gave them to my church. I gave them to Vera. Really? <laughs> I gave them to anybody. I, I, I put some up at my local grocery store. Uh, my local grocery store has Miss Daisy in the mm -hmm. corner. She, she has cookbooks out, so... They let me put some of those there, and um, so that was like the first 300 really went. The last 100 was a little slower because I'd already given it to everybody I knew. But um, people tend to pass it on. Mm -hmm. If I gave one to you, mm -hmm. and so you'd look through it, maybe mm -hmm. you'd read it, but you'd have a friend with cancer mm -hmm. and pass it on, mm -hmm. and that's meant a lot to me and Absolutely. I've gotten emails from people you know uh, my email address is in there some way mm -hmm. if you look for it um, and so that was fun but it wasn't exactly publishing a it was a different kind of different kind of experience well let's talk a little bit about the writing community here Vera tell us about the amazing collection of writers that we have here in Williamson County yeah in one word, let me see. Yeah, I, yeah, um, I probably wouldn't be sitting here if not for the writing community. Uh, here, it's very, uh, it's a blessing. We have so many creative minds, um, a lot of authors and writers, and um, and I would say the Williamson County Public Library is at the center of it all. And for me, I could say that uh, even though I was a scientist and uh, uh, successfully published scientific papers and written grants and all that, um, when I started involving with the local uh, writing community uh, here, actually it was a blessing. I um, first looked up into the uh, library, mm -hmm. uh, what's available, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's how I met Sally, and it's like a you know you forge your lifelong uh, connections with people and writers and authors, so awesome and so wise and mm -hmm. knowledgeable, and um, so I would advise people to just check at the library because they have workshops, right. Uh, writers groups and poets meet and uh, there was one that I actually uh, this annually there's some programs and we used to have uh, Tennessee readouts mm -hmm. at the library so mm -hmm. that's when I first went I was because mm -hmm. yes and because my mom uh, kind of got me into poetry and writing mm -hmm. she was an English teacher so I was into poetry and loved poetry and I, I lost her few years back. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a poem for her. Mm -hmm. So I heard about this readers, uh, poetry reading. So I said, That's great. I had to go for her. Mm -hmm. And then I went. I didn't know anybody. And I went and read. And mm -hmm. I see faces smiling at mm -hmm. me and nodding. And I was like, wow, they're really responding to me. And then at the end, I was about to leave. And Sally came and touched me and said, you know, we have this critic group that meets every first uh, Saturday and the third. Uh -huh. um, w we would like you to come. Yeah. And she said, your poetry is great. You have the rhythm. And uh -huh. I was like, really? <laughs> 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 so it is, you know, you may be writing poetry on your own and, you know, won't think anything of it, but it's great to get um, feedback from others and whom you can trust and respect yeah. and you know give you feedback and input and um, then like Sally always 
told me every time I read, and she's like, that's okay. You are a poet, Vera. You are a poet. Until I believed <laughs> myself. <laughs> so I had to, I had to uh, do it, and I had to, you know, work on it and keep writing. We have um, some other information if you want to know more at WCPLTN.org. And um, the Writers Critique Group meets on the first and third Saturday. And um, I was hoping to read some poetry today, but we are running a little bit long. So I'm disappointed. So you will have to come back and read well, some well, of your poetry to us next say time. Say quickly that the Critique Group welcomes all kinds of writing, and yeah. it's free and open to the public. Absolutely. And so, you know, nonfiction, memoir, novels, short stories, not, it, oh, it's represented by two points. Well, today. thank you today for joining us so much. It's been a pleasure, <laughs> and you'll have to come back. Yeah, we have to uh, come back and talk about, talk about the uh, Poets from the Neighborhood That's right. program. That's that right. We have a lot more to talk about. Well, thank you again, and we'll be right back. Did you know WCPOTN has a new teen club? So Star Wars fans, this one's for you. Come dress up as your fave Star Wars character, play Star Wars games, and chat about all things Star Wars in this fun teen-led program. And it's for ages 12 to 18. Go to our website, wcpotn.org, and find out more, or call 615-595-1278. Welcome back. In our What's Hot in Books segment, I'm very pleased to have with us again Katie Searcy with the Children's Department at the Main Library here in Franklin. And we're going to be talking about a brand new feature we have just made available for kids called Launch Pads. Thank you, Katie, for joining us Thanks today. for having me. Well, tell us about these launch pads. Well, uh, they're basically preloaded tablets, um, preloaded with learning games and all sorts of little learning apps. Um, they're 100% secure. They're ad-free. They don't access the Internet at all. So they're, they're safe for kids to play on, and they're, they're made for circulation in libraries. So they're, they're pretty sturdy. They, they shouldn't just, you know, fall apart after... After your, after your kid plays with it once or twice. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about those. They have pretty sturdy cases. They do, in, they do. In them, so. Well, how, how often, how long can they check them out? They come in the library and they select one and then how long can they check it out? They can check them out for seven days. And then of course, if there's not a hold placed on them, um, then they can, re they can renew those, but there are holds on most of them right now. Um, they're really, really popular. So, <laughs> Well, tell us about some of the topics that are on the launch pads. Okay. Well, um, there's your, your typical math, language arts. Um, we've got science. And then for the ones, for the, the younger ones, like the, the pre-K to kindergarten, there's, um, let's see, there's music, animals, life skills, creativity. Um, so there's, it's, it's a, there's a wide range of topics for, for all ages. So are uh, parents interested in the topics or that it doesn't have, you don't have to have a data connection? What do you think they're so popular? Is it just a combination of everything or what do you think? I think it is. I think that, you know, most, most kids have, have access to some kind of tablet that with, you know, just normal little, little fun games on them. But these, um, we have a demo pad in the library and I've noticed that kids get on there and they don't even realize they're doing math. They don't realize <laughs> they're, you know, doing language arts and they just, they just really enjoy them. Well, kids are very intuitive when it comes to technology mm -hmm. these days. So what, um, what is the youngest that would probably benefit from one of these launch pads? Um, they're recommended for, we, ha we have one for um, ages three to five, um, for like pre-K pre to kindergarten. Um, and then they go up through um, eighth grade, I believe, or ages 10 plus is what, what they say, so. Well, um, you can find out more on WCPLTN.org, but parents will have to have a library card in order to check these out. So tell us a little bit about getting a library card. Well, you have to uh, either live or work in Williamson County, and you have to be at least four years old. Um, 
So I think those are the basic requirements and then you'll, you can just come into the library or go online to the website and fill out an application and then um, come into the library and go to the circulation desk and show them your photo ID just to prove that you, you do live in the county and then they'll, they'll take care of you from there and quick and easy. Very good. So um, what other things that we have available for children? We have tumble books. We do. You want to talk a little bit about tumble books? Sure. Tumble books are um, an online resource that you can access through um, through the, the website, um, through the children's page, I believe. Um, and they, it requires a password and a username, which we have. Mm -hmm. So if you just if you call us and um, ask for the password, we'll we'll give you the password and the username. Um, but you just go on there, and there are there are books that we, they will um, they read to the kids, and they're they're animated, they're interactive, and they're they're really fun. A lot of kids really really enjoy them. It's a new way to do uh, bedtime stories mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very. I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and we also, of course, have our story times. So you wanna tell us when our story times are? Sure, we've got a toddler, um, toddler time story time on Tuesdays at 10 and then again at 11.15. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, we have a preschool story time, um, both at 10 o'clock and it's the same, the same story time, just a couple of different days. Um, and then once a month, we do a snuggle bug um, story time which is a, a lap sit for babies up through ages 18 months and that one's that one's a lot of fun we do lots of rhymes and bounces and songs and the babies always really enjoy it you can never start too early to oh, get no. children interested in reading at all so um well thank you we have a lot of things going on for kids we've got a lot of things hitting this fall and the winter with the holidays coming up so you need to check our website at wcpltn.org or come by and see some of our amazing children's staff and katie and some of the others will be there to help you out too so thank you so much for joining us today well, thanks for having me and talking about launch pads come by and get a launch pad thank you very much and we'll be right back did you know that if you're between the ages of 12 and 18 you can join our teen advisory group. Join in on the fun. You'll get to pick books, anime, and DVDs for our collection. Help us plan programs for the teen department and work on special projects that cater to your interests and talents. Contact our teen department at 615-595-1278 for more details. Welcome back to Not Just Books. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'd also like to thank our special guests for being with us, Elizabeth Medford, with the Better Business Bureau, poets Vera Jarr and Sally Lee, children's librarian Katie Searcy. Exciting things are happening here in Williamson County and the library is so honored to play a part. If you have any comments or suggestions for future, future programs, please contact me. The email address is notjustbooks at williamson-tn.org. You can also leave comments at the library's website, wcpltn.org. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at WCPLTN. And have you helped us make it a million? We want, you, we want to check out a million items this fiscal year, and you can help. Just visit us online at WCPLTN.org or any of our brick-and-mortar locations throughout Williamson County. Check out our wonderful selection of materials. You can enrich your mind and assist us in reaching our goal at the same time. It's definitely a win-win. And until next time, explore your world and read.